No Limit Texas Hold'em is the Cadillac of poker. You don't happen to have 8,000 bucks on you. Oh, no, no, we don't use money in heaven. Comes in pretty handy down here, bub. Oh, you just want a million dollars! You're making a run at it, aren't you? Rolling up a stake and going to Vegas. After much too long, I'm back with another vlog slash update on how things are going. Right after I returned from Punta Cana back to the States, I found out my bank account had been hacked into and drained of right around an amount of $43,000. Down to the felt condition. I'm, I'm, I lost everything. Yeah, so. They ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. Things haven't been that great. So it's been several frustrating weeks of fighting to get my own money back. Yo, don't I got some rights? And to be honest, it's not been going that great. There's a lot of compounding issues that make an already bad issue into a very complicated bad issue. Like one of them being I was out of the country at the time and I told my bank I was out of the country, so there's complications because of that. Uh, looks like my at least part of my social security number was compromised, which has led to some pretty big things in making sure that my identity is still intact. And another being it was an out-of-state bank, another being it was done via Western Union, which pretty much has a security policy of don't send money to the wrong people. So yeah, basically the biggest issue that I'm facing is that I'm responsible for the protection of my own identity and the bank isn't and right now there's not any other issue other than this what happened with the bank to as evidence that my identity was compromised so after the bank refused to open a further investigation went around to some different law firms trying to see if I could get them to take the case and this was the majority of my liquid assets so Obviously, it had to be pro bono until the case is resolved, which isn't all that unusual in cases like this. However, when they find out you're a professional gambler living in Las Vegas, making deposits to an out-of-state bank, living out of a car, it just looks pretty sketchy from a legal aspect of it. So there is some hope on the horizon as I had some friends in the banking industry and some former finance attorneys contact me and give me some different uh, ideas further this process along. So hopefully in the future, there's more of a case to work with. But right now, it's, yeah, it's looking pretty bleak. So yeah, that was pretty much most of my money. I was left with a couple grand in cash and a little under 1K online. And so not really rolled for anything at this point. In hindsight, it's obviously a lot smarter to diversify your assets. And so you don't go broke in case of something like this. And I can definitely see that, but at the same time, it's a f***ing bank. So what are my options? Uh, well, I have a few different options here. I ha we have option one, I could play on a short roll. So the two things to consider is how willing are you to lose this bankroll? Do you have any other routes? This doesn't really seem not that great of an option for me. I definitely don't want to be scared money on the table or scared to play any big pots or things like that. And you really can't uh, afford any type of downswing whatsoever. So that doesn't seem that like that great of an option. Option two, I could play lower stakes online since you're able to play like micro stakes online and play with a lower bankroll like that. But I didn't have 40 buy-ins. All I have is five buy-ins at five cent, 10 cent. Now I have to take that and turn it into 10 grand. Yeah, so that doesn't seem like that great of an option. Obviously, I don't really have a great place to grind online. And like you wouldn't want to be running deep in a tournament and then have the Starbucks manager say, sorry, we're closing, you have to leave. Grinding micro stakes online on public Wi-Fi doesn't seem like that great of an option. And you have to put in a pretty hefty amount of volume in order to have like a, get back to a decent hourly at that rate. Uh, option three, uh, I could be backed. I wouldn't have like an issue getting backed if that was uh, a route that I chose. It happens to people. Now, in general, it shouldn't. But the thing is, sometimes poker players either get down their luck. However, being back for 1-2 and 1-3 just doesn't really sound all that appealing. I mean, you're reducing your hourly to like $10, $12 an hour. Even if that goes well, you have to put in a lot of hours in order to just to get back to a role where 
that you're you can play on your own again and so like doing that doesn't seem all that all that great either and then we have uh, option four I could get like a real job definitely like the safest option but again not really one of my favorites because like going back to work and back to the nine to five and uh, in addition to the fact that being having poker player as the latest job on your resume can be hard to get through some companies. Incredibly tilting to come out to Las Vegas to play poker. It goes well the first year. You more than double what you come out here with. In January I was likely going to start playing 2 five full time. Doesn't look like that's going to happen. So yeah so that's all the bad news. What is the good news? Good news? I'm not dead. I'm not dead. So there's that. Uh, still in like pretty good health. Those are good things. I still technically have a roof over my head and I, I don't have rent coming up. In this past month I was able to game select on some different daily tournaments that had some decent overlays in them and ran pretty well in those. So had uh, some decent rules in that, so at least get like a little bit of cash back in my pocket. So I got that going for me, which is nice. Just because something really bad happens to you, you can't let that completely change your mood and just be walking around like, oh, poor me, what am I going to do? This is, My life is terrible now. Like, you know, you got to pull yourself up by your bootstraps. It's your right to listen to your gut. It ain't nobody's right to say no after you earn the right to be where you want to be and do what you want to do. I actually have a pretty exciting job opportunity coming up and I'll know in the next few weeks of whether it's a go or not. So essentially it's just a short-term contracting job in the aviation industry. Contracts typically last around three weeks or so until you move on to the next one if you want to. And it pays pretty well. So that'd be a pretty ideal situation for as far as getting money back. Some other good news is I've been so terrible at this vlog thing. I actually have some other vlogs that I've already shot and I just need to edit and post those up. If I do end up getting this job then I would be able to still have at least like some updates on the channel from past vlogs but I wanted to at least keep this channel at least semi-updated on what is going on. As always, thanks for watching and thank you to the people who have reached out and supported me while I'm going through this bit of rough patch. And yeah, we'll keep on grinding somehow. <laughs>